Hey, what's going on guys? So Coder.com has released something called Code Server, which allows you to run full Visual Studio code on your own remote development environment, on your own server, and you can run full VS Code right in the browser. And this is great because it gives you a consistent remote environment that you can access from absolutely anywhere, any machine, Chromebook, tablet, whatever it is that you want to use because it uses the server resources. Uh, it's also great for collaboration. So if you go to Coder.com, you can try it on their own servers but what we're going to do is set up a server on vulture.com which is a, a cloud hosting provider and we're going to install code server get it set up i'm going to show you uh, how to use it we're going to create just a sample project and give you an idea of how everything works so if we click on this host yourself it takes us to the github repository uh, and if we scroll down here you'll see it gives us a docker command so if you want to run it in a docker container you can do that Um, gives you some some information here. So code on your Chromebook, tablet and laptop with a consistent dev environment. Take advantage of la large cloud servers to speed up tests, compilations, etc. Uh, preserve battery life. So there's a lot of advantages to having a, a remote environment like this. And if you're like me and you, you don't really like Vim and, and some of the um, command line text editors, you now can use Visual Studio Code right on your server. Um, so let's go ahead and, and try this out. Now, I'm using Vulture, but you could use any cloud hosting provider or your own server. Uh, DigitalOcean is another one that's great. Linode, there's a bunch out there. AWS, of course. Um, but we're going to use Vulture, and I'm going to put a link in the description that gives you $50 credit uh, towards your account. So if you want to check that out. Now, I'm already logged in, obviously. I'm in my dashboard um, and just clicked on servers here, and I'm going to just deploy new server. And I'll just go ahead and choose, uh, let's choose in New York. I'm in Boston. Uh, and then down here, we choose our operating system. I'm going to use Ubuntu and I'm going to use 18.04. All right. And then they have packages from $5 a month all the way up to $160 per month. So it really depends on what you need as far as resources. Uh, I think the $10 per month is, is, is fine for what, what we're doing here. So let's see. I'm, I already have an SSH key set up. Um, but I'm not sure if it's valid, actually. So we'll try it out. If it doesn't work, then we'll use the password. Um, so server name, we'll say Traversy Media and that's it. Let's go ahead and deploy. So it's just going to take a, a minute or two to set this up. So when this is done, I'll be back. All right, guys, so my server is now up and running. You can see I have the IP address right here. So I'm just going to grab that and we're going to open up a terminal and ssh into the root user at my server now mine logs right in because i have an ssh key set up if you don't then you can use the password by just going to manage and right here you can see password and then if you click that icon it'll just show you the password and you can use that and i don't care if you guys see that because i'm going to delete this one after All right, so we're now logged into the server. I'm just going to clear this up and we want to install code server. So if we go to the GitHub page here, you'll see this download a binary and currently there's binaries for Linux and Mac. Uh, Windows is coming soon. However, if you're using any kind of cloud service provider like Vulture or DigitalOcean or something like that, AWS, chances are it's going to be Linux. Um, so we're going to click on download a binary. And we want this one right here, the tar.gz. This is the Linux file that we want. So I'm going to just copy the link address and go into my terminal. And there's a few ways you can download things from the command line. I'm going to use the wget command. Uh, I know I know a lot of you guys probably know some of these commands, but for those of you that don't, I'll, I'll just explain it. Um, so this will download the file. I'm going to paste it in. Okay, it's getting that tar.gz file, which is a compressed file, so we need to extract it. So I'll clear this up and you can see if I run LS that lists the, the contents and you can see I have that file. So I want to extract it. So I'm going to use the tar command and I'm just going to add on XVFZ and then code and then hit tab and it'll finish it for me. So I don't have to type out the whole file name. So that will extract it. If I do an LS, you can see now we have that folder extracted. So I'll CD into that folder 
and if I do an LS in here, you'll see the code server binary. All right. Now, I, this, that's what we want to run and I could run it from here, but I want to move it to my bin folder so that I can run it from anywhere. Okay, so I can create a, a project folder, whether it's a React app or a PHP app, whatever it may be, and just open up Visual Studio Code in that folder. So what I'll do is use MV to move the code dash server to slash bin. All right. And if I do an LS, now it's gone. So let's CD back up into my um, user directory. And I would just want to clear out these these two things here, the folder and the file, because I don't need these anymore. So I'll do an RM dash RF. Get rid of the the uh, folder and then just RM to get rid of the file. And now you can see we have a clean directory. So now let's create uh, we'll say make directory my app. Okay, we'll create a project folder. We'll CD into my app. And now we should be able to just run code dash server. All right. So what happened here is it, it ran the binary and it runs it on. It runs code server on port 8443. So let's grab our IP address. And of course, yours will be different, but we're going to paste in the IP address in port 8443. All right. Now we don't have an SSL installed, so you're going to get this message here. Uh, if you just click advance, you can just proceed. But if you're going to set up a dev environment and use that, you know, professionally, you should probably secure it. And I think if you go to the code server page right here, it says how to secure your setup and you can actually generate a self signed certificate and stuff like that. If you want to look more into that after. Uh, but as you can see, we get this enter your password page. So we want to go back to our terminal where we're running code server and just grab that temporary password because obviously you don't want anybody to just come to your domain or your IP address and be able to mess around with your files. So we want to put in that password and there we go. So now we have VS Code running full version of VS Code running on our server remotely. And I'm just going to do a couple things just to show you the workflow and, and how fast it is. And remember, we're only on a $10 per month plan. It's not like this is some crazy powerful server. So let's um, let's see. Let's go to the settings and you can see that all the settings are going to be the same. I'm just going to increase the font size a little bit. Let's do 26 and also the terminal settings because we also have the integrated terminal. Uh, let's see, where's the font size? Let's change that to 26 as well. Okay, um, and we can install extensions and themes. So if I open up the uh, command palette and I search for themes, so let's say color theme so we can change it to, you know, one of the default, one of the the prepackaged themes or we can install a third party theme if we want. Like, let's say this one dark pro we can install that. Enable that. Okay, so now we have that one dark pro theme, although I'm going to just change it back. But I just want to show you that you can do all the same stuff. Also, it's pretty fast. Um, let's install an extension. So I'm going to grab the uh, live server extension. So a lot of you guys have seen me use this. It allows you to just open up HTML files um, on a dev server with auto reload. So you don't have to keep reloading the page. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And just take note of how fast everything goes. So let's create a file index.html and we have full Emmet. So I can do exclamation enter tab. Let's close that up and let's do an H1. We'll say hello and save and I can right click and I can say open with live server and it's not going to open on its own. So I just have to grab the IP address here and go to port 5500, which is live servers default port. And there we go. Okay, and it's auto reload so I can do like hello world and save go back and it auto loads and you can see how quick it is. All right. So just an example of installing an extension and using it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop live server. Now I want to let's do something different. Let's create a react application. I'm just going to delete this index HTML and I'm going to open up my 
integrated terminal here. Now this is a new server, so we don't have anything on it yet, including node. If I do node dash dash version, we don't have it yet. And it says we can install it with the aptitude um, package manager, which is the package manager of Debian Ubuntu. But if we if we do it as is, we're going to get an older version. So we actually have to add node source dot com as a, um, a repository. So the way that we do that is with curl. So we're going to do curl SL HTTPS Deb dot node source dot com slash setup underscore and we want 10 dot X and then we just want to put a pipe character and pseudo bash hyphen. So that'll allow us to get the latest version of node and, and NPM. Okay, so once Once this is done, we'll go ahead and clear that up. So now we can run our apt package manager and we can install node JS. Yes. And you can do this from here or from your your regular terminal, obviously. Okay, so now if I do node dash dash version, we have version 10 installed. Good. I'm going to clear that up and I'm going to run NPX and create dash react dash app into the current folder. So this will generate all the react files into the my app folder. All right. So as you can see, all the files have been generated and we can run the react dev server with NPM start. Okay, so that's going to start on 3000. So I'm going to grab my IP address. And again, of course, you could you could add a domain so you don't have to use an IP address. Uh, so now it's running on 3000. So if I go and I use my IP and then uh, port 3000, you'll see that React is now running. Okay, and I can go ahead and let's create a, a components folder. And inside components, we'll create a file called hello.js. And I'll even install a React extension. So I'm going to search for ES7 React. So this one right here, uh, Re React Redux GraphQL snippets. So we'll install that. And now we should be able to do like RC. Um, let's do our. Yeah, let's do let's do a functional component. So our RFC. All right. And then in here, we'll just do an H1. Doesn't really matter. Um, now, this is something I wanted to mention as well. And this isn't just with this is with VS Code in general. If you want to enable Emmet within JSX, which is what React uses, then you have to go to your settings. So Let's go to settings and let's search for Emmet. And we want this included languages right here. We need to say edit in settings dot Jason and we need to add here. Emmet dot included languages and we need to set that to an object and we want to we want to include JavaScript and set that to JavaScript React and we'll save that. Uh, let's see what am I unknown configuration setting. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's include not included. So include languages. All right, we'll save that. And if I go back to my component here and I do an H1 tab or enter, then Emmet now works. So we'll just say hello world. Let's save that. Let's go back to our file structure here and go to our app.js and we'll go ahead and import hello from dot slash components. You can see IntelliSense works the same way. It's it's really cool. And we'll just replace this learn react here with our hello component and save. And automatically, if we go back to our application here, we get this hello world. 
All right, so you can see how nice and fast this workflow is uh, completely remote has, you know, using the server resources rather than my local machine. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop this server. And let's try something else before before we end the video here. So I'm going to actually stop VS Code from running with control C. If I do that and I try to reload this, obviously it's not going to it's no longer going to work. Okay, so we'll close that stuff up and let's cd dot dot and let's create another directory called um, we'll call this. Let's call this. Uh, I don't know. We'll just say my app too, I guess I just want to do something different. So we'll create a quick express server. So we'll cd into my app too and let's run code dash server from here. Okay, so again, we're going to get a password. Actually, we want to grab our IP address. I could I, I probably should have just left the tab open. 8443. Proceed and let's grab that password. Paste that in. And now we're opening code server in my app too. Okay, so let's open up our terminal here and let's do an npm init dash y. So I'm going to just install Express. Okay, and we'll go ahead and create a new file here. We'll call it server.js. And let's just do this real quick. So const express equals require Express and we're going to set app equals to express. We'll create a quick endpoint. So app dot get say for slash. And let's just do a res dot Jason. We'll say message. Hello world. Okay, so we just want to now do app dot listen, we'll listen on port, let's say 8080. And we'll just console log server running. Okay, so quick express server and then down here, actually, let's create a script real quick in package dot Jason. We'll say start and we want start to run node server. All right, so now down here we'll say npm start. We get server running and let's grab our IP. And let's go to port 8080. And there we go. We get our JSON. So you can create APIs. You can do whatever you want. And I've been de doing JavaScript stuff. Of course, you could use this for absolutely anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop that express server. And I'll go ahead and stop the entire code server. All right, guys, so that's going to be it. Hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully you'll check this out. I mean, I, I think it's really innovative. I think it's really cool. Um, I'm definitely going to use it. And it's a great way to 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 have a remote dev environment and to just access files on your server remotely with VS Code rather than some of the command line text editors. I know some people really like Vim. I personally do not. Um, so I think it's a great way to access files and also share and, and you know, there's there's a lot of advantages to it. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm also going to have a link to get $50 off um, uh, for Vulture if you're interested in creating a, a cloud server. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a like if you like this video and I'll see you next time.